Hi, it's Julian and we're incredibly excited to share our first video in a series about website accessibility. During the series, we will be exploring how we consider design theories and techniques to make accessible websites. We'll also be exploring how interactions can help reinforce accessibility and finally, how sites should be built to be as accessible as possible. But before we go into the specifics, why is accessible web design important? Well, according to the most recent census in the UK, which took place in 2021, it was reported that just under one in four people have some form of disability in the UK. This can range from physical to mental differences, but many affect the way people understand and interact with a website. So on a purely transactional point of view, brands and companies are really missing out if they don't consider how their website caters for the needs of these users. And for local authorities and governments, it is even more important that their website or digital service, as sites have become more commonly known as recently, are as accessible for its citizens as possible. So how do we make a website accessible? Well, there is the WCAG, which stands for Web Content Accessibility Guidelines that sites are measured against, with a number of different levels of guidance which get more and more specific. These have ensured that there is at least some guidance and standards around website design and build. But these are all very technical, and it's far easier to think about it in the terms of the acronym PAW, which stands for perceivable, operable, usable, and responsive. For perceivable, we are talking about the content being presented in a way that can be perceived by all users, regardless of their abilities. This includes providing text alternatives for media like images, videos, and audio to allow screen readers to convey the information to those that are visually impaired. It's about ensuring that content can be perceived through different senses, such as text that can be resized without loss of content or functionality for users with low vision. Also providing alternatives for time-based media like captions for videos to make content accessible to people with hearing impairments. When it comes to operable, users should be able to interact with the website and navigate it effectively, meaning that all interactive elements are keyboard accessible, as some users may rely on the keyboard navigation instead of a mouse. Content and functionality should allow users to be able to pause, stop and play content, and ensure content doesn't cause seizures. When it comes to tasks that have time limits, such as booking tickets, these should be adjustable or give users sufficient time to complete that task. To make the site understandable, the information and the operation of the user interface must be clear and easily understandable. This includes using clear and straightforward language, ensuring the organization of the content is logical and provides predictable navigation and consistent layout. Users should also be able to correct errors they make during their interactions with the website. And instructions for the forms and processes should be clear and concise. The language on the site should avoid jargon or complex language that might confuse users with cognitive disabilities or those whose first language is not one in which the content is presented. Finally, for robust, content needs to be accessible with current and future assistive technologies in mind, such as web browsers and screen readers. This is to ensure that long-term accessibility is possible as technology evolves. The site needs to use valid and well-formed code and follow coding standards to make the website more resilient to changes in technology. We think the idea of standards is incredibly important, but it all feels a little bit tick box exercise. It's like management processes and ISOs. They have their place to ensure consistency and quality, but do they talk emotionally to the customer? When, for example, was a website's accessibility discussed from a marketing or customer service perspective? In Will Gadara's book, Unreasonable Hospitality, he writes about how he and chef Daniel Hume transformed the New York institution, Eleven Madison, into one of the world's most celebrated restaurants. The restaurant became known not only for its food, but also for its service. Often, as Will notes in the book, it was all about going that extra mile, providing customers with goodie bags to go home with, 
rushing out to pay for customers' parking, which was just about to elapse, to buying a traditional New York hot dog for a group who hadn't managed to experience one on their trip. The idea that service should be treated as an equal to the food was revolutionary and it helped the restaurant achieve three Michelin stars and was also voted best restaurant in the world with the ideas and concepts around service transforming the industry of fine dining as a whole. So when it comes to websites, how can we try and do the same? In many ways, websites often feel devoid from the values and missions of organizations in a brand sense. So while they're adhering to accessibility requirements, there is no extra mile. We can see thinking in other areas such as reducing waste and ethical purchasing, but I can't think of when the last time a brand said we have an inclusive website. If anyone can think of an example, then do drop us a message down in the comments as to who might be doing work in this area. Jerry McGovern is a well-known author, consultant and speaker who focuses on improving user experience, content strategy and web accessibility. He is particularly recognized for his work in emphasizing trust, humility and simplicity. And these three pillars for us attempt to break down the barrier from one that is purely technical to one that is also looking at the wider picture and thinking about the user. Considering the authenticity of content and a desire to be building on success, he notes trust as a critical element in web design and content creation because users need to trust the information they find on a website. This involves ensuring that the content is accurate, up-to-date, and reliable. Jerry McGovern emphasizes the importance of building trust with users by providing transparent and authentic content, avoiding misleading or false information, and clearly citing sources where necessary. Trust is also tied to accessibility, ensuring that a website is accessible to all users, regardless of their abilities, builds trust by showing commitment to inclusivity. For humility, it's about acknowledging that the users know best. Jerry McGovern encourages content creators and designers to put the user's needs and their preferences first. This principle emphasizes listening to the user feedback and adapting the website and its content accordingly. Understanding working with users promotes a user-centric approach. Humility also means accepting that you might not have all the answers and being open to continuous improvement based on user input and evolving best practices. Humility also means accepting that you might not know all the answers and being open to continuous improvement based on user input and evolving best practices. Finally, simplicity is about making websites and content straightforward and easy to understand. Simple designs coupled with clear, concise content lead to better user experiences. Jerry advocates for removing unnecessary complexity, avoiding jargon, and focusing on what truly matters to the users. And through simple and user-friendly designs and content, it helps users find information quickly and complete tasks with ease. So while these share a lot with Paul, it's the introduction of the user being the focus for these decisions that make them real. So what does this mean for us? Well, in the next video, we'll be looking at designing accessible websites. We'll be exploring fonts, layouts, contrast, and dealing with media. And most importantly, looking at how we can make accessibility within the design of a site a key consideration. Thanks for listening and do let us know what you think. And if you're enjoying our content, do consider subscribing. It helps us out a lot. Thanks again and see you in the next video.